Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show you that the raw Elgamal encryption scheme that we have been talking about is not CCA secure, meaning if somebody modifies the ciphertext, the recipient will not know the fact that the ciphertext was modified. So they will get a wrong message, so to speak. Say, let's say Alex uh, has a message M. Usually, if the eavesdropper is just eavesdropping the channel, um, there is not much uh, the eavesdropper learns. We proved it in the previous segment that it is CPA secure. However, if the eavesdropper is modifying the traffic, which can be possible in some cases, um, say for example, uh, the eavesdropper multiply it by four, Bob, the recipient, will decrypt it. The decrypted message will be 4M. See, Alice send M, but the decryptor got 4M. That's a problem. So we, we cannot detect that. There is uh, the raw Elgamal scheme is vulnerable to chosen ciphertext attack. That's the CCA attack. Okay, let me show you a simple demo of this idea. Suppose, uh, let's say, uh, for the proof of concept per purpose, I'm generating really small primes. Um, so the, the parameters are not uh, good for production use, but that's okay for demo. So I'm only generating a finite 12 bit primes that I get quickly. And then I will go ahead and generate a message. Okay. The parameters are generated already. And I request you to watch the other videos because these are all the standard term uh, literals that we have been using so far. Okay. And um, let's do some encryption. So we need a message. Let's generate a random message. Let's check whether the message is a quadratic residue, which is needed for Elgamal. Okay, the message is quadratic residue. So now um, let's go ahead and do an encryption of this message using the parameters P, the the safe prime, the group generator, and the public key H, and the message M, we will get a pair of ciphertext C1, C2. Okay. We can go ahead and decrypt P, G. Of course, we need a private key X, and then C1, C2. Okay. We can check whether we get the same message M. Yep. We got the same message M. All right, so far we just did a regular Elgamal. Let's now modify the ciphertext. The, the first part C1 is nothing but, let me show you what C1 is. C1 is nothing but G power Y. Y is randomly picked by the sender of the message. C2 is nothing but H power Y times M, okay? But what happens if now we multiply C2 by four? Okay, four is a quadratic residue, therefore C2 times four is also part of the valid ciphertext space. Okay, so let's do that now. Let's take C2 and multiply it with four. Of course, we need to put it back into the group. So we need to do a mod P. Hmm. Okay, and now let's try to decrypt. Let's try to decrypt the, okay, now let's decrypt the modified ciphertext and see what happens. A decryption of uh, P, G, X, C1, C2. Okay, now let's see whether this is the same as four times M. Print four times M in mod P. Yeah, you see, message is four times M. So the attacker modified the ciphertext and when the victim decrypts it, he gets four times the message that was sent by the sender. So this is the reason why I say that Elgamal scheme is not CCA secure, chosen ciphertext attack secure. It's not, um, although it's CPA secure. It's, you cannot learn about the message. Uh, the message itself is randomized, meaning whenever you encrypt the same message again, you get a different ciphertext. That's good, but that's not sufficient. All right.